Elation has often been sold to us as a path that only concerns itself with fun. The creed by which they live by is said to be the pursuit of ecstatic laughter, which may lift one's soul to the levels of divinity. Often, their followers chase after any and all forms of happiness that they hope one day may lead them to that elusive, breathless laughter. Despite their proclivity for the seemingly comedic side of life, there is a hidden side to the elation. One that, through the actions of its eon, seem to portray concepts of tragedy. But why would an eon that prides itself on laughing at the universe act in the manner that is seemingly opposite to the comedic traits its path seems to be set on? Why would Aha consider things like blowing up a train or causing suffering as things that are equally comedic, especially if it only has laughter in mind? That's what we'll be discussing in this video. The hidden side of elation and perhaps its true purpose in the Star Rail universe. Before we dive into the deeper madness of elation, if you want to see more Honkai Star Rail content, do consider subscribing to the channel. Comedy and tragedy are often described to be at opposite ends of one another. Stories that are structured as comedies often aim to amuse and entertain as they evoke feelings of happiness and joy, while tragedies often deal with more serious or distressing events and bring forth emotions of fear and sadness. In terms of story structure, comedies often have endings that are positive in nature. The hero wins, they overcome some sort of difficulty or some form of reconciliation happens by the end. While tragedies often deal with the downfall of the main character or their journey through failure and to humility. Even the characters are fundamentally different, with those in comedies often being underdogs, while characters in tragedies tend to come from a higher social standing or positions of power. So it's pretty clear that both these dramatic concepts sit at opposite ends to each other. But if these concepts are functionally so different and are so opposite in their natures, why does the outcome of Aha's actions seem to result in both comical and tragic outcomes? Now, I'm sure some of you are saying that Aha has only ever acted in a comedic way, doing things that it finds fun or funny. And to a certain degree, that's true. But it's really a matter of perspective. To an outside observer, there are plenty of examples of Aha and even the mass fools acting in ways that may be seen as tragic or rather results in tragedy, despite them getting a laugh out of it. In the simulated universe developer log, Herta once shared the story of how Aha tried to get a worm to join the Genius Society. It granted the worm the entirety of their path's power and fathomless intelligence, but unfortunately, the worm couldn't achieve what Aha wanted. Once it was done with the worm, Aha discarded it and left it to die tragically. Now, I'm not putting that word, tragically, there to prove my point. It's something Herta herself says as the worm supposedly suffered having gained sentience and intelligence only for it to be taken away. The worm was literally uplifted, given all the powers of elation and made an emanator only for them to die shortly thereafter due to all the power being taken away, emulating the story structure of both comedies and tragedies. Then there was the time that Aha tricked the Nameless. Aha spent a year walking amongst them, gaining their trust, only to blow up the Astral Express and an entire planet as part of its schemes. Aha might have found this hilarious, but to the nameless and the inhabitants of said planet, it cannot be further from an outright tragedy. So despite Aha seeing its actions as possibly funny, I'm sure there are others that will likely disagree. What Aha sees as comedy can functionally be seen as tragedies, which seems to contradict its mission to bring laughter to all. Can it really be said to be doing this if only Aha itself finds its pranks funny? Plus, what has Aha exemplifying elation through comedies and tragedies have anything to do with anything? How does this relate to that hidden purpose of elation I mentioned earlier? Well, the explanation is going to take a bit of time and will be a bit convoluted, but I really urge you to watch all the way until the end because all this talk about comedy, tragedy, and the truth of the universe all comes together only at the end. In their taverns, the mass fools often share a parable about the birth of their beloved Eon. The story goes that when Aha first came into being, it climbed the highest branch of the tree of existence and instead of seeing the universe teeming with life and majesty, it only saw a cold and despicable void. A universe functioning like a machine, planets, stars and galaxies rigidly moving along the laws that govern them. 
Ahaso existence, this grand and beautiful thing, seemingly bowing to the nothingness and meaninglessness of the systems, rules, and laws that fundamentally run the universe. The story goes on to say that Aha continued looking out into the void until it saw a baby fall to the ground and started to cry. Aha thought this was funny and let out a boisterous laughter that resonated throughout the entirety of the universe which reverberates until this very day. Now this story is one told by the mass fools. There isn't any clear evidence that this is really what happened. The whole thing might be something they made up just to justify their beliefs but I'd like to think that the first part of that story has some kernel of truth to it. Aha did see the universe for what it is, an empty and meaningless place. I've spoken before in past videos about how the universe of Star Rail might be on a continuous and endless loop. Every event that is about to happen has happened before and choices you make won't amount to anything as it's all been predefined. Perhaps this is the truth that Aha really saw. It realized the true nature of this looping universe. It's not something completely crazy either. I mean, AHA was able to figure out it was in a simulation when we first met them in the simulated universe. Some of the mass fools, likely those who have stronger connections to the path like Sampo or Sparkle, seem to even have abilities that allow them to break the fourth wall and see things as they truly are. So if AHA now knows that the universe is what it is, why does it act in the way that it does? Well, I think that if the universe did exist in a loop, each eon has a specific function in facilitating that loop. Terminus is responsible for the end of the universe and has planned out the universe's ending and is trying to ensure that happens. Fu Li is recording everything as a method of preserving the information of the universe for the next cycle, which was hinted at in the simulated universe. And Clipoth is functionally ensuring the universe exists long enough, perhaps to ensure each eon's task is completed. Now you might say that not all eons fit into this. I mean X, the eon of nihility, is functionally not doing anything, and Nus, the eon of erudition, has been reported to have stopped all its computations. But consider this. If the universe did exist in a loop, and everything you do is predefined, wouldn't eons like X be justified in its apathy? What's the point of doing anything if things will happen in a sad way? Plus, it would make sense for Nus as well. If you recall, Nus was originally created to figure out the nature of the universe. Having figured out the pointlessness of the universe, there really isn't any point in trying to figure it out any further. But this is a video about AHA, so let's get back to them. It's in this idea that perhaps AHA has a role to play as well. You see, AHA is said to be the second closest eon to mortals, right behind Akavili, because it interacts with them so much. I think that it's possible that elation is meant to prepare mortals for the realization that the universe is inherently predefined. Imagine if you were one day to learn that everything you do has no meaning and carries no purpose. I bet most would join X in its apathy. Perhaps, in order to ensure the universe continues on to the next cycle, AHA has to teach and train mortals to be able to weather this truth by accepting its futility and just laughing it off. This is perhaps the hidden meaning or purpose of elation. It's not meant to just find fun and happiness. It's to realize the purpose of your existence and be okay with your role and the inevitability of its end and why tragedy is just as much a part of elation as comedy is. I mean, even among the many things floating around AHA, the masks of comedy and tragedy can be clearly seen further showcasing their relationship with AHA. Now I bet by this point, you're wondering why I brought up all this stuff about comedy and tragedy and how that really relates to that true purpose of elation I mentioned. Well, it actually does tie back to all the things we've been talking about. You see, in Aristotle's concept of catharsis, he claims that both comedy and tragedy can help provide emotional release for the audience and is functionally the main point of it. It allows the audience to deal with complex and difficult emotions they would otherwise have no natural outlet for. Tragedies help people deal with stronger and more intense emotions, while comedies provide a more enjoyable form of catharsis through laughter and humor. This is why I think that despite exemplifying laughter and joy, which is how AHA is often described in law, it also does things that cause a tremendous amount of tragedy. AHA is functionally preparing mortals for the ultimate truth of the universe one that it has known for some time, in that the universe is meaningless, as it's all a never-ending loop, and nothing you do really matters. 
What makes this really interesting is that all the paths are speculated to be products of intense desire among mortals and are fueled by the subconscious needs of those mortals. Perhaps elation was born out of a need to deal with the larger-than-life problems each person might have living in such a huge universe. You know, existential stuff. Much like coping with the fact that you might not have enough summons for Akron or Aventurine because you just had to summon Sparkle, but I digress. Ultimately, perhaps elation isn't just about laughing and enjoying oneself, but rather it's about understanding that in the face of harsh reality, the only thing left to do is to be ignorant or accept it as it is and laugh it off. That's why when Aha climbed the tree of existence many millennia ago, it didn't laugh because something funny happened. It laughed because it was the only thing it could do. Perhaps all Aha can do is to put on a play. One that is tinged with comedy and tragedy, not to cause us suffering, but instead one that can help guide mortals to accepting their fate when it eventually is revealed to them. Maybe that's why Sparkle likes performance as well. It's the true mark of a fool who has understood her place. A jester for the audience that is the universe. With that, it brings this video to an end. I know that there are some plot holes here and there with this idea, but I thought it was interesting to explore a version of Elation where Aha isn't the reckless and irresponsible Eon we think they are. Taken simply, Elation does only aim to gift its followers with the freedom of laughter and fun, and maybe that's really all there is to it. In any case, let me know what you think in the comments. Is a more complex Aha more interesting, or is a straightforward and simpler laughing god what you prefer? If you enjoyed watching the video, do consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Thanks so much for watching and as usual, have a nice day.